So I would, grew up surfing here, moved here when I was 12 turning 13, and then just surfed all through high school, competed and started winning and getting into contests. And then moving out to Hawaii and that type of stuff. Did that take you around the world, those contests? Yeah, yeah, multiple times, yeah. What so, was your favorite spot you've been? Probably Tahiti is my favorite spot in the world in general. Why? Um, it's what Hawaii used to be, so to say. It's not commercialized. It's um, just locals, the salt of the earth, sweetest people and the best waves in the world. Um, I like the Philippines a lot too. The waves are really great there. Indonesia's fun. But so I Bill's think Tahiti, gone, right? Bill's going to Indonesia. He's going to mentalize, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a cool spot. Yeah. It's pretty remote. It's in Padang. Yeah. Good waves though. Where's your favorite Jersey surf spot? Right Aaron Point, Jenkinson's. I'm a Manasquan boy, but I would used to ride my bike to the inlet and then just uh, park my bike, jump in the inlet and then swim follow across. the barges out. Yeah. And just swim across. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of, I have a lot of surf buddies. I've never been into surfing yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, you know, they're like Jersey's super underrated. Yeah. Yeah. For, it for is. Surfing. Yeah. What, yeah. what, what would you say makes Jersey so cool when it comes to surfing? Uh, well, Jersey guys will never admit that they weren't the best at something. So it's like, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta have good waves too. So we just like to brag about it, but we do. It's just, it's like, uh, the thing about Jersey is funny is like, I look at it like scarcity is value when the waves come everybody drops everything because yeah, they're they so out. valuable like so yesterday like i surfed six hours i was like my birthday was on monday i was like i'm gonna paint today i'm gonna take care of the kids tomorrow and bring them to the water park and then wednesday when the waves come that's my day and then i just so i like worked it out so i could surf for like six hours yeah, everybody was out bill yeah, all those yeah, guys everybody yeah, hurricane. Yeah. you're not gonna miss a like a hurricane swell in august in new jersey it's not happening how were, how were the waves it was good it was like a like an eight out of ten almost yeah it was actually really good surprisingly yeah. Now, obviously, Hawaii, especially the mm -hmm. North Shore, you have that famous pipeline out there mm -hmm. that you see on a bunch of different, you know, YouTubes and documentaries yeah. and social media. You know, explain the main difference from there to here. Obviously, the waves are, are yeah, much bigger. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Pacific Ocean just lends itself to having the most power of any spot. So especially where Hawaii is situated, it just gets slammed by the Aleutians, I should say. Should more like this on a weather map, though, from Japan these giant storms um, that just push so much swell. The other thing is the reef is different there. So the energy is coming from way longer distance. Like this is a ground swell the last two days from a hurricane, but normally like the nor'easters, it's called fetch, but it's just short period waves, meaning like that chattery wind, the waves are coming localized. There they're coming from a thousand plus miles away. So they have this like steamroll energy. It just is like doesn't stop. So it's just the intensity, like we're here, you'll get like maybe 30 waves in an hour. You might only get 10 waves there of substance in an hour, but they're gigantic and all the energy's built up. So it's just, it's just the two different versions of how the storms build East Coast versus the Pacific. Yeah. And Hawaii is just all that energy running into the most perfect shallow reef that you could possibly, you know, imagine. And it's, it's like harder than this. It's like, uh, it's, you know, aged lava rock, jagged lava rock. So that you're surfing over totally different criteria. Yeah, like how many people get slammed into that at the yeah. bottom in, in Hawaii? A lot. So, yeah, so I, had, well, that I, had, like a nick, I had a nickname, it was, like, it was like the Black Cloud Howley because like stuff would just happen while I was around and I got a lot of action, so I got a lot of experience, especially at Pipe. And I've had over 15 cases at Pipe that were near deaths and it just happened to be off duty or on duty. And that wave is like a wave that connects every surfer because if you're a surfer, you want to surf pipe at one point. It'd be like, I want to play in the Super Bowl if I was in the NFL, I want to get that chance, you know? Of course. And so, but what happens is in that road to glory, people, you know, lose their life or get close to it. And luckily- It's like climbing, climbing all, Mount all Everest the, yeah, or something. So out of all the cases, 14 of them survived. One guy was DOA on arrival. Good for you? Duty, yeah, he was just gone. He hit his head. Um, looked like somebody hit him with a spike baseball bat, gone, did everything we could. Like, and I was actually looking for my wife after a big set that came through. She used to surf with me when I was big. And I just pulled him up with a friend by his leg rope. I was off duty, got him into the beach. And it was like, it's funny. Cause I remember that one. All the other ones are like, oh yeah, a blur of success of people popping out. But that yeah. one was heavy. Yeah, traumatic. Yeah, yeah it's traumatic. Yeah.